Hi, Midnight Chef here. Man, again, we're just going to have a feast tonight. It is veggie roast night. <clears throat> now, it sounds like a fairly easy thing to do, but that's only because it is. Um, but to do it well, you just need a couple of hints, right? Um, I've seen veggie roasts out on the internet, and the way they come out is like, you take some carrots, you put them on a tray, you throw them in the oven for about half an hour, and you take them out. That's crap. Let's not do that. I'm going to show you how to do an excellent veggie roast. The only thing you need is, uh, <clears throat> uh, what am I trying to say? The only thing Veggies. you need is a little bit of patience to tend it properly, right? And the reason I, one of the reasons I love this recipe so much is because it's not even a recipe. There is no veggie roast recipe, right? Take whatever veggies you have and you roast them. But the trick is you have to do it at super high heat and you have to do it in order. So like you can't take a beet and a mushroom and a little tiny snow pea and put them in at the same time and have them done at the same time, right? So you have to kind of you, you kind of have to plan for this. So your root stuff is usually going to go first, right? Typically, we do carrots, beets, rutabagas, potatoes, uh, parsnips, um, all of those nice root vegetables, right? If you can think of something else, go for it. Uh, but right now, let's just go ahead and jump in, right? <clears throat> I can talk while I do. I like to start with a nice big bowl. Now I've got <clears throat> these carrots here. Uh, a lot of times I'll use regular carrots from the store and I'll just cut them lengthways until they're about like this, right? I'll, if I get a nice big carrot, I'll cut it in half, then I'll cut it in half lengthwise so that it's about this size, right? It's not that. And I don't even bother peeling them. Just wash them. Don't cut the tips off or anything. Just put them. But I, I found these lovely uh, <clears throat> smaller baby carrot type things at the farmer's market. So we're going to go with these instead. So I'm going to put these guys in here. You know what? Those are a little bit wet because you just washed them. So I'm going to dry them just a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. doesn't have to be immaculate. No. <clears throat> you need to oil these guys because... If they're super dry, then they're not going to brown as well as they need to. But the trick to oiling these things is to put just a little bit of oil on. If you put a lot of oil on, it's not necessarily going to hurt them, but they're going to be swimming in oil, and that adds a lot of fat and calories and whatnot to your dinner, right? Kind of defeats the purpose of having a big, beautiful veggie roast if you're going to fill it in with tons of fat, right? So I've put both fingers over the thing here, and I'm using grapeseed oil, but you can use any oil that you have. And I put just a little bit. Notice how it's just drizzling, right? And then I get in here with my hands. So they're just moistened with the oil. There we go. Now, <clears throat> I probably should have waited to do all of that until I had everything I wanted in there. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to put my beets in. And the beets don't go in whole, but they don't have to be cut up really small either. Let me move this over here for you so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. That's better. So now I'm just going to take this. And you notice how we still have a little bit of the top on the beet and we haven't cut the root off either, right? Don't worry about the root. So I'm going to cut that in half. And these are fairly small beets, so I'm just going to cut them in half again. Oops. Like that. So now I've got four halves that look like this, right? So I'm going to chuck those in there. And I'm going to do these other ones the same way. If they're really big, then you can cut them into thirds, but these are not big at all. So half is going to work just fine. And by half, I really mean each half and half, right? So quarters. That right there. There we go. Just like that. <coughs> okay, so I've got my carrots and my beets. And these are the guys that are going to take the longest to cook. So you really need to put them in first. And there's another one that's going to finish before them, but I always put them in at the same time, and that's broccoli. But broccoli is, broccoli and Brussels, actually. Uh, broccoli and Brussels are both fairly long cookers, depending on the size, right? So we're going to take this guy right here, and we're going to cut him just like that. So fairly large pieces like this. Drop him in there. And 
we always end up making really big veggie roasts. I'm only going to put two of, two of those stalks of broccoli in there, honey. Mm-hmm. Because that's an awful lot. It wasn't all meant for it, necessarily. <clears throat> and then I've got these Brussels, which roast beautifully. If you don't like, if you don't like Brussels, try them roasted like this. Mm-hmm. Our kids Even our love kids them. Even our kids like them. I like end up donating my Brussels sprouts to the older boy because he loves them so much. Right. <clears throat> so I will do all the Brussels. Out. Now, depending on the size, sometimes I won't even cut them. Uh, if they're really big like this, can you see that? Yeah. If they're really big like that, I'll cut them in half. But elsewise, I will leave them whole. But yeah, you don't even. Because the the deal is, is you want them to char outside, and when you see this, you're gonna you're gonna love it. We 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 get them really nice and charred on the outside. Come on, dude. And, uh, uh, but you still want them to be, to have lots of nice veggie inside, right, that's not charred. So you want them to, to cook enough on the outside to char, but not be so incredibly cooked that they're just falling apart on the inside. You still want them to be, you know, nice inside. So that is the whole point of watching them like we watch them. And most of these are big enough to have to cut, that one's okay, to have to cut in half. But you really don't need a lot of prep with this. You just wash your veggies and uh, <clears throat> just start shoving them, start shoving them in, uh, in oil and throw them in the oven. So right now I've got my broiler on and that's the difference, right, is you're not you're not going to bake these guys, you're going to broil them. So that broiler is that direct heat from the top and you're just going to you're just going to sear those things from the top, right? But seal in the juices. Ha. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get just a little bit more oil here cuz I got a lot of veg in here now, right? There we go. And before, ha, ha, before I put my hands in there, I'm going to get my salt and pepper. Ha, thought you were going to get me again on that one, huh? No. Oh, okay. So I've got some salt there. And I'm probably going to have to salt and pepper it a couple times. There we go. I'll leave that open. I just give that a little toss. And, and quite often, I get in here and get my hands in there because I want to rub that oil. If you were using a lot of oil, you wouldn't have to get in here and rub like this, but I don't want to use a lot of oil, right? So I'm going to take what's on the carrots and rub it on these, uh, on these broccoli and on these uh, uh, Brussels. Because I want just the thinnest coat that's going to help protect them from the heat from drying out too much, and it's going to help them brown. So, there we go. And now I'm going to do salt one more time. More. There we go. And pepper one more time. Nice stiff shot of pepper. And then toss that pepper again. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, you cut it. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Now, this beautiful medley gets handled very gingerly right under there. That didn't look ginger at all. So, Spread these out on the pan. Look at that color. Is that gorgeous or what? It's very nice. And this pan goes up underneath the broiler. No, we've got to do our potatoes. I do my potatoes in a separate pan. <clears throat> but why, Sean? Why? <clears throat> because they can be cooked dry a lot easier than the others. And they've got... I, they've got different cooking requirements. If I put those directly up under the up under the heat like that, they'll burn on the outside before they're done. So I cook them underneath where they still get the heat from the oven. And then once they're done, I brown them. We have a question from the imaginary audience. Okay. Could you do this with all potatoes? Because I like potatoes a lot. Yes, you could do this with all potatoes. Oh. No. It, it, the potatoes that I'm roasting 
won't roast unless there are other things roasting as well. He's kidding. So, okay. We've got a little mix of potatoes here because we've kind of got a... Uh, uh, a bunch, bunch of leftovers. A bunch of leftovers, yes. So we're just going to cut the eyes off of this, uh, off of this golden potato. And, but you know what else is really nice? Those lovely fingerlings mm. and uh, any type of new potatoes like these guys right here are really nice. So we're going to use those as well. Oh, while I'm doing this, I'm going to heat up my pan over here for my potatoes. For my potatoes. Hopefully that'll stop clicking in a second. So now, make them fairly big. That's lovely. And there we go. And I've got my russets here. Same thing. I'm just going to cut them in half. Are there any potatoes you wouldn't use for this? Uh, not that I can think of. I'm personally not super fond of the red ones or the purple ones. They're okay, but they're not my favorite. But if you like them, dude, go for it. You don't mean these red ones, do you? No. I mean the pink ones, the ones that are red on the inside. Oh, I understand. There we go. Get my other golden here. And then I'll handle these reds quite simply just by cutting them in thirds like that. There we go, and one more. That one will actually just be cut in half. All right, <clears throat> so I've got new potatoes. Far, 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 far. I would like to apologize to our Irish brethren and sisterin for our terrible so, accents. So, got my potatoes. You can see they're just very roughly cut. Our UK brethren and sister in. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> right in there. So now <clears throat> it's a misconception that you have to have oil to roast potatoes really well. They roast dry just fine. As a matter of fact, when I do the fingerlings or the just the, the small new potatoes that I don't have to cut, the ones that are like really small, I leave them whole and I just I just do them whole. I never, I never oil them or anything, right? And you can still season the outside and all that. So that feels hot. I'm going to dump these guys in just like that. <coughs> oh, and for your uh, veg, turn on the convection if you have it. If you don't have a convection, that's okay. It'll just take a little bit longer. But this convection really moves things along. It really... Uh, <clears throat> it really cooks them a lot faster. So now I salt these guys. A couple good pinches of salt here. A couple good pinches of pepper. There we go. Give these guys a little toss. Now I'm going to leave them here for a couple minutes and let them get nice and, and hot in this pan before I put it in the oven. Now, what have we got left? We've got green beans, we've got mushrooms, and we've got snap peas. Oh yeah, and you, you were letting me forget the, uh, the garlic. Letting you forget? It's on the board, right in front of you, along with the onion, which you also usually forget. So we've got... <laughs> I really need to find a more compliant cameraman. <laughs> Um, so we've got some garlic that we want to do because we love roasting garlic with our roasted veg. So you want them to be as whole as possible, so I'm just going to break this clove apart like that. There we go. Get the paper out of there. Take this other one. I'll show you how easy it is again. You just take this guy right here and you just give it a couple decent smacks with your hand. I'm trying to leave them as whole as possible. I'm trying to take it easy on them and not smash it to bits. There we go. You can put a towel under it and smash it with a big knife if you want, right? Or put a towel over it, not under it. Okay, so I've got my whole garlic cloves. I'm going to take out as much of the extra paper as I can, but I want them to stay peeled. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take a handful of these. 
these guys. There we go. And just dump those in with the potatoes. Just like that. But wait a moment. You didn't take the skins off. <laughs> I said I wasn't taking the skins off. Yeah, I know. Because when garlic cooks, it turns nice and mushy. And so you just peel that skin off or squirt it out depending on how done it gets. I right? prefer to squish it out. Squish it out. It's a nice, it's a more tastier adjective. Okay, so this is plenty hot. So now I turn the fire off. I'm going to take this guy and shove him into the bottom of the oven. And I can already see some stuff. <coughs> so you'll probably check this for the first time after about 10 minutes. You'll go in there and the ones that are turning black, you'll turn. And then you'll check it five or ten minutes after that and just keep checking and turning about every five minutes until they're done. And what does done mean? Done means when they're nice and charred on most sides and you can stick a fork through them and they're done um, or al dente, depending on how you like your veggies, right? Um, I like them both ways actually, especially the carrots. I like to put them in there and get the small ones that are almost that are almost black and just cooked all the way through to where they're, they're really, really soft. And I also like the ones that are kind of crunchy. So I, I like it both ways. The potatoes, eh, you know, let's not do the Thai thing, right? Let's let's cook our potatoes. I'm looking for my uh, lid on this thing. Here, I can start throwing some of these away. Oh, there it is. Weird. So I'm not really done with the oil yet because I've still got to do these guys. So anyway, like I said, I've got... I've got green beans, and I've got snack peas, and I've got mushrooms to go. And they can't go in yet because they're going to cook a lot faster. So we got to put them in when these guys start to uh, when these guys start to get done. Then have them all done at the same time, more or less, right? And that's another thing you're going to see us do. And I want you to get this out of your head because I think a lot of people have this this preconception that when you cook something. You put it in the pan together, and then you take it out of the pan, right? And that's not necessarily how things are done. A lot of times you will take things out as they get done. So we'll find a little Brussels sprout turning black. I'm not going to leave it in there to turn into charcoal while the other ones get done. Take it out, right? So you're going to take these things out as they're done, and, you're gonna, and the pile outside of the oven is going to slowly grow, right? Um, I still need to prep this onion. Um, I've shown you guys how to prep onions many times, so I don't, do, you, do you want me to do it on camera no, now? That's fine. Okay, so I'll do this off camera because I'm just going to cut it in wedges, and it'll go in fairly soon. Oh, and she wants tofu, which needs to go in fairly soon, actually, because it's, it's kind of a long-termer as well. Hey, thanks for draining all that. I did drain it. I didn't press it, but I drained it. Well, I just turned it upside down and got a load of crap on my board. So. I drained it. Okay. And I provided you a towel. So, she wants tofu. So I'm going to cut tofu into wedges like that. And come this way. And do like that. So, got them in about like that, right? So with that in mind, I need to season and oil the tofu. Not much oil. Like I said, just enough to keep it from uh, from being exposed directly to that heat, so it can that oil will help keep it a little bit moist. So again, I put my fingers over here. I don't want a deluge of oil, right? There we go. Just toss that. should go in with the others. So, let's take these guys out and I'll show you what they look like initially. In fact, I may need to start up another pan. But look at that. They're already starting to look gorgeous. And you see, this isn't even as dark as you're going to get them. They're just beautiful. But I'm going to turn these guys. Look at that broccoli. God, it's just amaze balls. So I'm going to turn these guys over like that so I can get some of the other side and start cooking them on another side. 
dark side? Yes, quite dark side. Of the force. Let me see. I'll be with you. Yeah. I'll let you know when you're funny. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll turn those over too. See, I'm even starting to get a little bit right there too. All right. Alrighty, turn that over just because it's starting to get a little. Alright, so I've got all this on here. I may actually end up starting up another pan for the tofu. So, which happens to us sometimes. So, I'm going to turn this sideways like this and put it over here on the right. And then I'm going to get another one and start up the tofu. And put it over here on the left. So, there we go the tofu right there and I will end up putting this other stuff on the tray with this one when it's ready right the onions and things there we go so we got our tofu there let me wrap my hand off and I will throw it on the other side and I will check them and almost every other every time pretty much like every other time you open the door to check on them is when we're going to toss the potatoes you can't just let them sit there, right? You know, let them all get exposed. <clears throat> okay, so with that, I'm going to do this onion, and we will be back when it's time to turn the guys again. Five minutes or so. Okay, it smells like it is time to check these again, so let's check these again. Come on over. Oh, we're coming, we're coming. Oh, yeah, look at that. Gorgeous. That is the beginning. A beautiful, oh, a beautiful roast. Oh. So now, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this and just upend all of these guys like that. Always flip towards the middle, <clears throat> and they escape sometimes anyway. There we go. And this is what I mean by tending them, right? You just need to make sure they're not scorching. You want them to darken and caramelize on one side and, and char, right? But you don't want them to burn. I mean, that's charred. That's not burned. Yeah. <coughs> but this is going to be a much more beautiful roast than anything you see done just in the oven without the broiler. That stuff comes out blonde and cooked, but not lovely. Yes. And now I will check the tofu, which is still fine. There's nothing, no need to mess with it at all. And it's time to flip these guys. There we go. And back in the bottom of the All right. See you guys again in about five. Okay, guys, let's check this again. Let's see where we stand. I stand with fog glass if I can't see a thing. Uh, looks pretty charred. Yeah, it does. Alright, so. Get these guys. No, no, that's looking beautiful. That's how we want all of them to look by the time they're done. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it's gorgeous. So, I'm going to take these. No. See this guy right here? Yes. He is done. I'm going to put him in this one. Well, actually, I need to switch these over first. Hold on. I was prepping those guys. So I'm going to put them in the mixing bowl. There's no cross-contamination. They're all vegetables. That only counts with meat. Oh, okay. So, got this guy right here. He can be done. This guy right here, not quite. This guy right here. So now, I'm going to take all these guys and flip them over again. Pull out of my way. So I'm just tending my stuff. That guy, nice and done. That guy's nice and done. There we go. And I'm going to try to make sure that the dark side is down on a lot of these to give another, another area a good chance. There we go. Spread that out some more. The more you, the more you take out, the more you can spread them out, right? There we go. Turn that one over. He needs to be done on the other side. Same thing with that one. Okay, now, <clears throat> I've got these tofu in here that aren't 
doing supremely fast. I'm going to make sure they're not sticking. There we go. <clears throat> and now I'm just going to switch sides. So I'm going to give these guys a chance. So I'm going to put them over on the right. Get over there. <laughs> like that. And I'm going to switch these over to the left. You just got to manage these just a little bit, right? Time for a good tossing. Back in. CN5. Alright guys, let's check it out again. Check on our tofu. We're looking better. Check on these guys. Again with that carrot. Oh my god, that's beautiful. Let me turn that over. Turn that over. Just keep flipping these guys. And this is what your life is going to be like for a little while when you make a veggie roast. I'm going to melange all these guys. Well, that flipping you did then doesn't really do much good, huh? Yeah, well, you know. Suck it. That's absolutely perfect. And we'll flip that over like that. There we go. Okay, so. Do that and get these. There we go. That one could use a flip. You flipped it, so it's there you go. <laughs> You honestly think I don't know that? Maybe. Yes, you did think I didn't know that. That's yeah. okay, though, because sometimes I don't. Yeah. That one's still not ready. Just to turn it over. There we go. Looking for, looking for a lot more stuff on these guys. These guys will be nice and black before we're done with them. Okay. I'm give it a little evening out shake. And back inside we go. Just to say I... I'm going to come on these guys. Got my eyes compromised there for a second. Oh no, there's a tofu bit. We'll have to. Yeah, we're going to have do to something manage that. that somehow. Do you think of anything? I could eat it. Oh, really? Yes. Well, I'll put that right there. Hey, thanks. Let me see what that looks like on the other side. Probably nice and brown. No, oh, not too bad. All right. So these guys are actually getting closer. They're getting close enough that we're going to go ahead and dump in the onions and mushrooms that I have already oiled and salted and peppered. And I don't have to keep them separate, but I'm going to. There we go. See you in five. All right, guys, let's try it again. Look at that. That's getting a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and switch sides for this one. And take that broccoli out, huh? Yeah, yeah. That broccoli is done. See how gorgeous that is? Now, to you, that may look burned. I promise you, it is not. This guy, nice and crispy. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Oh, the perfect carrot. Easy dagger. That is beautiful. That guy's almost done. I'm going to leave him. This guy can be turned over. This guy can be turned over. Because you see, he's perfect on one side, but he needs this one. Now, the reason I'm taking these guys out, even though they're not done on the other side, is they're smaller. And they're just going to get overcooked and mushy. So, they can be taken out a little bit early. This guy, beautiful. So, we're just going to pick through these guys and find all of them that are done. Most of them are not, but... They're getting more and more though, huh? Mm. That one's good enough. That one needs a little bit of time. This guy needs a little bit of time on the other side. There. Speaking of time, I'm guessing if you put herbs in here, you'd be sorely disappointed because they would just crisp up to Yeah, they would just burn black. to a cinder, yeah. Now, <clears throat> that does bring up a good point. Um, seasoning or, or flavoring this, right? Mm. I have had very good success with flavoring these things. See now, this guy's starting to get, this beet is starting to get the way we want it to be. But I've had very good success flavoring these guys after the fact. Mm. <coughs> so what you do, here, I'll, I'll talk about that after I'm done with this, okay? Mm. So I'm going to put this back on the other side, and then I'm going to go to my potatoes. Oh, the potatoes. Stuck here. There we go. Make sure nobody else is stuck. Perfect. 
then again, we'll crisp those up after they're cooked. Okay, so, I've had really good luck flavoring these things after the fact. There are a couple ways you can go about this. Well, actually, I guess it's the same way you're just arguing over flavorings. You can take a little bit of water or a little bit of vegetable stock, a little bit of mushroom stock, right? And you can take a couple heads of garlic and roast them whole for about an hour until they're nice and mushy. Cut them in half, squish them into the stock, swirl it around. So now you've got this garlicky stuff, right? Pour it all over your vegetables and just toss it up. Dude, so good. You can do the same thing with curry paste. So, so good. So you could do the same thing with thyme. You could take a little bit of vegetable stock or mushroom stock, something like that. Take a whole heap of fresh thyme, put it in there, simmer it for a few minutes and all the way down until it's nice and, and thick. Dump that over your veg and toss it. You could do it with rosemary or you could just um, put the herbs, some of the herbs in here and let it steam with these guys as they start to get done they'll start to steam some of the herbs out like the rosemary if you chop it up really nice and fine sprinkle it in here and toss it every single time and it'll start to take on the flavor so or you is, can leave it like it is or you can leave it like it is which is what we're going to do um but yeah so you you've got a number of things you could even take the uh the roast tomato stuff that we did yesterday for the pizza for the roast tomato pizza thing right We've got some of that dipping sauce left. You could add a little bit of water to it and toss the veggies in it, or just toss some of the veggies in it. So you've got options. Anyway, see you in five. Okay, so we're at, we are at the point where we can no longer wait a full five minutes in between. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, you burned them. No, I didn't. I promise you. These are gorgeous, look at that. That's what you want. I told you nobody was doing it right. You're conditioned to things when they look like this, that they're burned and they're bad. No, 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 no. You're going to love this. This is a vegetable roast, not a vegetable barely baked. I've never had anybody complain about this, including us. Mm-hmm. And guests. Ones. We had a guest, a notable guest ever recently who absolutely died over this. That's right. These guys, and you see they're being done more and more. Look at that. That's perfect. Absolutely. That right there gives you just enough of that uh, roasty taste with the rest of the vegetable to mm. just be a lovely mix. That's done. That's not quite. That's perfect. It's gorgeous. Show us what not quite looks like. Um. Because I can't see <coughs> over your hand. Well, that one's just blonde. That one's just blonde, right? But not quite. Quite on the other. So it's a little blonde on the other side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just keep an eye on that. Make sure it doesn't turn off on us. I'd hate to bust out into a yeah. badass genius lecture about roasted veg and have it not be captured for all eternity. Yes, good point. Yeah. So this one, nice blister on there. Nothing on there, so I'm going to turn it over. Oh, it's dark. It's dark, but same thing with that. Done. Done. And again, some of these Brussels are going to be undercharred because they need to, you know, they need to not be uh, Crud. complete mush, right? There we go. Turn that over. All right. This guy, a little blonde on the other side, but as done as he is on that side, he's perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, a reference photo of the finished product. So you just go through these guys. There we go. And I think, well, other than these guys right here, that is a good pick through on all of these. There. But you notice, I've got enough in here, and I've got enough in here. I'm not, I'm not leaving them all in the damn pan until the whole thing is done. Okay. Now let's do the other tray. Okay, so we've got some onions in here. Now, these onions, look at how overcooked these onions are. No, this is gorgeous. You add that with a potato, you will be very happy. So these guys are done. Well, that, that took no more time at all for the yeah. onions and mushrooms. 
what was it, like five, maybe eight minutes? Uh, maybe yeah, it's 10? hard to say. Some of these guys are, oh yeah, oh yeah, some of these guys are getting nice and crispy on the outside. That's lovely. That's lovely. I like them nice and crispy. That's good. Actually, I'm going to call done on all these. The only thing I have left now is to finish off that other pan, which as you can see is happening very rapidly. And the potatoes. <coughs> and these guys. I've got snap peas and green beans in here. Now, funny thing about these green beans, you notice I'm not taking the tops off of them. This is supposed to be a very rustic dish, right? Either break the end off or just bite the end off. It doesn't matter. But you don't have to do a lot. The whole point of this is you don't have to do a lot of prep, right? So I'm going to oil, salt and pepper these same way. Barely any oil. I'm going to put them on the tofu pan and then we'll be back when it's time to rotate again. All right. It's time again. It hasn't really been that much time. It's been about three minutes. Come on over. Yeah, I come. And some of these guys who weren't done before, look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. All these guys are done. There's just no buts about that. I'm going to call these guys. I'm going to call that one. I'm going to go ahead and call that one. That one for sure. That one for sure. At this point, it's what's not done. Yeah, exactly. So it seems like a painstaking process. It's really not that bad. Um, but if you want them to be perfect, you want to eat a very lovely roast, then you have to make a very lovely roast. And tending is the only way to do that. And that's good. I'm going to go ahead and call that one. That one's awfully close. I'm going to put that right there. Mm, I'll call that one. Why not? It's a little bit iffy on that one side, but it's It's not right. like it's going to make us sick. Exactly. I'll leave that one where it is. All right. And the rest of these will run with mucus. Something like that. That's a quote, by the way. He didn't actually mean anything about mucus. Yeah. And if you notice, I've got these other guys in here. And the potatoes, it's way too soon to be messing with them. But we've got this lovely massive stuff in here in our bowl. Just gorgeous. Mm. Okay, so I have finished up that one pan and taken everything out of it. I didn't figure you had to see that. You know what they look like by now. Now, the thing you got to realize is these things are much easier to clean if you clean them right away. So I'm just scrubbing this off and you're going to find it's not that bad. And if it is that bad, if it does come out looking like really black in a couple spots, just soak it for a little while. You'll be fine. Um, and I will say that uh, if I'm cooking for five and we eat tons of this stuff, if you don't have that many and you're, there's no way in the world you're going to make two pans of this, that's fine. You can make everything on the same pan, just, you know, don't pile it up because the stuff on the bottom will get done, right? So as they get done, start taking the stuff out. And when you get enough room, then start putting some of the lesser or some of the faster cooking stuff in there, right? So, uh, <coughs> it's very easy to do this for one or two people. Although, you'll find that even doing this for one person, you really end up making enough for two because, you know, not only is it yummy and you're going to eat a lot more than you think you would, but it's also really hard to take potatoes and carrots and parsnips and, and, uh, butternut squash, which I was going to put in here and forgot, and onions and green beans. It's, it's hard to accumulate all of those things and not have a pile of vegetables, right? You're going to end up putting like three or four peas and two or three green beans. and It's just, it, it's hard to do, right? So now I'm going to check these guys. Ah, see, look at that. Bet you didn't know you could make green beans like this. Just gorgeous. I'm going to shake these around a little bit. I'm going to toss them. The hair, there we go, just like that, and put them in again. And they're almost done actually, we don't have to keep them in there for very long. Since they are almost done, I'm going to pull these, now look, 
how my potatoes have managed to brown even on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Right? So I'm gonna toss these and I'm gonna turn these browns these brown parts over to the to the bottom like that, and I'm gonna put these up under here and let them, I'm gonna move these over to one side, and I'm gonna let these start getting brown as well. And when they are done, I'm gonna put everything in the bowl, mix them together, dump them out on the tray and serve them, and we will be done. So I'll be back in a couple minutes. That's it. <laughs> okay, and we have everything done now. Our potatoes are done. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a little bitty secret, right? A little bitty See, huh? when, when they get nice and, and brown like this, and if you cut them too big and they're not done yet, throw them in a bowl and throw them in a plastic bowl and nuke them. Nobody's gonna know the difference. So we put that in there. I'm gonna put this sink. Uh, now I just want everything to be all melange together. So I'll give that a nice toss. Dump it all back out onto the tray and this is how it gets served. Let's give me a nice close-up of that and there you go guys <clears throat> that is veggie roast done right. Happy eating.